All right, welcome everybody to the March 5th WebMaker Community Call. Um, the Etherpad agenda for today's call is etherpad.mozilla.org slash March 5th, that's capital M-A-R-5. Please add yourself to the rolled call there under line 29 if you haven't already. here. And before we dive into our first uh, agenda item, just want to pause and see whether there's anybody joining this call for the first time who wants to say a quick hello. You can add yourself under line 66 Jack. or just say a quick hi now. Jack. Who's that? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm here. here. Thank you. Is that Christos? Yeah, I'm Christos from Greece. I'm new here. Greetings to all. I'm Mozilla rep. And oh, cool. uh, I'm, I'm a Mozilla web maker, <laughs> I guess. Uh, just say hi. It's really nice to, for being here, and I'm really excited. Great. Thanks so much for joining, Christos. Anybody else? Sounds like no, so let's uh, push ahead. I'm going to mute all the lines now. The conference has been muted. So from this point forward, if you want to be audible, you'll need to hit star 7 to unmute yourself. I'm going to scroll down uh, under line 74. Uh, lots of blog posts and updates for your uh, perusal. Um, and I want to direct people's attention to line 100. This is a, a new standing item for these calls. We're inviting all of you to let the world know what the coolest thing you saw on the web last week was. Um, so we're going to use these to inform some of our own work in web making. Um, so there's lots of good stuff there. really encourage people in particular, check out the link in line 103. It's a great popcorn video on how to hack paper. Um, and the Delone Painter on line 105 is pretty mind-blowing as well, plus some great mashups in there. So lots of stuff in there. Uh, without any further ado, uh, our first item, line 119, WebMaker Mentor Community Team Update. I'm not sure who, there's no name next to that one. Who's going to be telling us about WebMaker Mentor Community Team Update? Hi, Matt. It's Chris. Can you hear me? Hey, Chris. Yes, we can. Um, I'll. I'll uh, sort of ring lead this section really quick, and I'm going to pass it off to Paula and then be um, some other people. Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, just a couple of quick updates. I can't remember if we did end up announcing this at the end of last week or not, but we can, with confidence, state the Mozilla Festival MozFest dates for this year are October 25th through 27th um, in London and at Ravensbourne again. Um, so there we go. That's all set. Reservations are being. Um, booked. Everyone knows that needs to host something venue-wise, so we are confident with that right now. Saying that, um, the, it's a little earlier than than normal, but um, we, that was a bit of a conscious choice. Um, feeling that a li little later in November, we sort of ran into some holidays here in the U.S., and it was a felt a little late to catch advantage of some of the energy coming out, so we backed it up just a little bit. Um, in the end, it may not make the biggest difference, but you will notice it looks like about a week to ten, two weeks earlier than the last couple of years. Um, also, Paul will talk a little bit more about um, some meetings that we had in London here in a few minutes, but also at Line 126, we started to come together with a little bit tighter clarity around thematically what this year's WebMaker campaign will be. So that Dropbox link is actually to a slide deck we used in London um, at a meeting. Um, and starting to think about, um, rather than the sort of summer code party theme of 2012, uh, calling it a we uh, WebMaker Remix Party. Um, you'll notice a couple changes there. Um, one, we are decoupling it from the, the sort of uh, seasonal bias that we have in the hemisphere of summer, so um, because it's not summer everywhere, of course. So it, it'd just be going with um, sort of just a, a set amount of time, um, but not, not necessarily a, a linkage to a season. Um, a switch from code to remix, um, one, to, to mimic some of the places that our tools are going, and to signal a broader tent and a broad, more partners, more ways in which content, tools, themes, um, missions are being m remixed um, and thought of with new collaborations and a new collectivist energy going forward. Um, so there's a little bit more explanation about that thinking in the slide deck, and we'll definitely be talking about that more going forward, but I wanted to share out 
um, the, the, where the thinking is landing right now and get, people, get people's feedback either here or going forward about, about that thematically um, and show that visually. Um, do we want to, is there any, is there, we take, if there's any questions here I can pause. Chris, we can um, have folks add questions under line 150. Okay, sounds good. And I apologize. I, I sort of was locked putting this agenda together at, because I actually am just back uh, in New York City as of about midnight last night from a pretty whirlwind trip in both London and Athens. So um, that's where some of our other updates are going to come from. At one, line 130, we were in Athens, Greece, um, really for two events that we, that we really kind of ended up co-planning together and thinking very much as a one uh, larger event and theme. Um, one is to help support the growing Athens Hive Learning Network communities there with the very first event, which was the Athens Pop-Up. It um, was an amazing event. Um, it was heavily co-designed, developed, and managed by Mozilla and number fronts. One, obviously, as part of the Hive Learning Network and Hive Learning Network Global Initiative. Um, secondly, the local um, Mozilla reps and Greek community on the ground. Um, we really were kind of co-designing from both of those vantage points. Um, it, was, it was truly an amazing event. They had 100 kids there. Um, they had probably around 25 to 30 volunteers. They had nine different activity stations that included activity stations um, around make, uh, making tools, symbol, um, popcorn, um, of our very own Chloe here and the group Play On, right? Am I saying the name right? Um, was one of the best activities there. And Chloe is like literally a superstar celebrity amongst these uh, learning and Mozilla communities in Greece. So you could see uh, the kind of things that she's been working on there for years come to fruition. <laughs> and Chloe, you can't, no one can see you hide under the desk <laughs> um, with her embarrassment, but it had to be said. Um, and and we'll be sharing lots more about that as it comes online. It's literally just happened, and, and local organizers went on immediate vacation. But there are Etherpad with literally tens and maybe even multiple at times tens of examples of projects that came out of that of that pop up, and we will collect and get those in short time. We were also there to do a Remo training, um, and the Remos helped with the pop up. Um, and then we spent three intensive days with a set of, of Mozilla Remos and helping them think and helping having them help us think about the mentor community work. Um, and so these Remos spent the three days thinking about not only being Remos, but being webmaker mentors and sort of webmaker Remos sort of in shorthand and what they would want to do to start contributing to the webmaker project as mentors as makers themselves, what kind of hacks and remix can, remixes can they bring to these tools, how can they drive localization, and how can they really be that top of rung of web maker mentors running events in communities um, globally. So there was reps from Indonesia, from India, from Africa, from Europe, from North America. Um, and that was really led by Michelle and Laura Liger, who are still actually wrapping that up, so if we could have a more detailed um, report back to them as well. And Gunnar, if you're on the call, did you want to say anything about those couple days as well? Sorry, I'm putting Gunnar on the spot, so maybe he's not. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, beautiful people. Yeah, it was really, really a blast. I mean, I think what, what really caught me off guard was what good chemistry it is to see all of the deep knowledge the Remos have. You know, I mean, I think they put us on, a, on, 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 the, uh, on the core WebMaker team, they put us to shame with their technical knowledge. And so it was really exciting just to watch their brains wrap around what it looks like to do WebMaker mentoring. I can't shout out the core organizing team uh, enough, Pieros and all of the folks that helped make those events pop the way they did, and Themos on Saturday, um, just really eye-opening about how explosive the potential is around this partnership, this collaboration, and just the, the messages resonating. So those would be my quick takeaways. Awesome. And Gunnar was for the first day and doing his usual Gunnar facilitation, and then Michelle, Laura, and I did our best to hold that up. 
Um, and it really, this part I wasn't there for either because I had already had to hair to shoot out of town. But I got a report just within the last hour that th at the British consulate they ran a web, basically after three days of intense studying how to be a web maker mentor, they actually put um, the rubber to the road with 90 high school kids at the British consulate and, um, and actually had to, to operationalize these things fast. And by all reports, that was amazing. And there'll be a Greek TV news report link that we can share in a couple days. So um, I'm teasing a lot of things. This is basically in the process of still happening or we haven't fully unpacked it. But I wanted to say um, that this happened and it was awesome and that we will be you know, collecting these things and sharing them out probably on next week's call so people can dive in. I've tried to put some of the hashtags and some of what we already have, including the Remo Harlem Shake video, um, which I unfortunately was already on my way back to the States when that was filmed. So I could not add my wackiness to the mix. One big takeaway for me was how hungry a lot of these Remos are for, for three things. One, the broader connection to the work of the foundation and webmakers specifically. Two, webmaker swag, um, which I know surfaced on the call maybe last week or previous, that we have got to get our process in order for what that is, looks like and how it's distributed. Um, and then three, how much I think being part of Hive pop-up happens, and then also just their knowledge of Hive in general, how much interest there are in growing Hives in their local communities, and how um, we need better on-ramps for that, which we're working on, and I'm confident that we have a good plan, but it, it seems like that plan is never fast enough for the, for the appetite. Um, and then I will, yes, Gear Store at 145. They were ready to, to beat us up. They don't have a better plan for Webmaker Swag. Um, so I'm going to tag off to Paula, who I, I talked about Athens first. Previous to that, there was Webmaker Mentor Team people on the ground doing similar community and seating in London. So Paula, take it away. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Cool. I apologize. I'm in an open office, folks. So it's a little noisy behind me. Uh, very sorry. Uh, hello from an extraordinarily beautiful day here in London. The sun is shining. This is the one day of the year. I am sitting in the window making the most of it as I speak to you. Um, we had a super, super cool day uh, last week on Friday afternoon. We've been working towards for a little while the idea of a, of a Proto Hive gathering. What I mean by that is really trying to get together as many of the different folks across the UK who are really at the coal face of delivering digital making programs to young people. And we did, um, we were super thrilled. We got 40 people who turned up representing around 25 organizations. Um, and I think it's fair to say for, for those of us from Mozilla who was there, it was an incredible day having all of these organizations that really are at the cutting edge of delivering programs to young people. The energy was really great in the room. Uh, and really the idea of the afternoon was to really just unpack all of the opportunities here in the UK for us all to be working together much more closely and really optimizing the impact that we're having both on young people's lives but also really um, uh, making the most of some of the political, cultural and, and indeed media momentum that's happening here in the UK. So just very quickly the kind of key things that we touched on uh, we are about to kick off here in the UK um, a campaign called Make Things Do Stuff. Um, some of you I know have heard a little bit about this. I am really hoping that sometime over the next two weeks I'll actually be able to come back to this group and do a little mini pre presentation of Make Things Do Stuff um, and share with you a little bit of the thinking and the work that sits behind that. But in, in brief it is literally what it sounds like, a, camp, a branding campaign that really helps all of these organizations have an identity that links them all together uh, in the minds of young people. And so that we introduced that uh, and it went down very well. We got lots and lots of interest from folks who want to be part of that campaign and want to really sort of think about how they can participate. We of course also took them through the um, Webmaker campaign for this year, the Remix campaign. Again, really terrific interest. Lots of conversations kicked off on Friday about how organizations like um, we have an organization called Code Club over here 
they have 600 plus clubs, Saturday morning clubs around the country, how they might be able to be part of the WebMaker campaign. So lots of really exciting opportunities. And of course this year uh, we are having campus party uh, in London uh, towards uh, late summer, early autumn. Uh, fall for those of you who speak American. And, uh, and so we also wanted to make sure that people were aware of all of the opportunities around that. And of course as part of Webmaker we also talked about MozFest, we also talked about the idea of having a UK Hive pop-up here in, uh, in April. And the rest of the day was really about folks just getting to know each other, really thinking about all of the great opportunities there were for partnership between themselves, with us, uh, and with some of the other organizations already involved in making do stuff. I want to do a special call, a shout out to all of the Mozilla folks who were there. We had folks like Chris flying in. We had um, Mark and Jeffrey. John Bevan actually left his new baby to come and spend the afternoon with us. So it was really, really great having all of that support there and it definitely made a difference. Folks were so impressed with the energy and the commitment that Mozilla is making in this space in the UK. So I think that's it in short. Chris, was there anything else that you could think of that you wanted to shout out? No, outside of that it was amazing to be in two locales with so much energy and multiple um, strands, people, and communities. So it was, it was um, from the mentor community work, it was pretty uh, exciting to see that happen, you know, basically within 12 or 14 hours of each other in two locations. So um, thanks for that report back, Paula. Sorry, and I know no I didn't Paula on the – on the spot about five minutes previous to the call. So. <laughs> you know I love to have a little chat. Never a problem. Um, and if you see it line 156, this, uh, you can see the slide deck that Paul and I um, put together before that we talked to the, the group in London there. Um, the, Christos was able to get his line restored. Chris, were you able to get back on, my, on the phone? doesn't sound like it, but I think we will also table some higher level report outs from, from Greece once the, the, the participants can actually sift through it. Like I said, it's the, the flames are still smoldering, so um, but I wanted to sort of top up some of what we experienced, but we'll be unpacking that before the next call and sharing out with more detail. Um, so that was all I've got. i um, happy to, I'm sort of sifting through some of the questions here. I've tried to answer them, but if there's anybody um, that wants to talk or ask a question audio, shoot. And if not, we will move. Very cool. Thanks so much, Chris. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, everybody, for a great report back. Um, if there's any further questions for Chris or Paula or the team, you can um, add them under line 165. Um, but let's push ahead to line 183, the WebMaker weekly release. Brett and Jacob, what is on the WebMaker train this week? Hello. Hey, <laughs> Brett, are you there? Yeah, am I, am I here? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry, Brett, then I can see you. I'm, Talk I'm now. here. <laughs> okay, so the, the train, hold on, I found, I found this in my kids' room, so. I think it's pulling out of the uh, station, Brett. Uh, there we go. Um, so we closed uh, 24 issues in the last seven days, and they were almost exclusively focused on landing media sequencing. So last week we said we, we had our fingers crossed that we would ship it this week, and it looks like we will. Um, so it's really awesome news, and I just want to give some kudos to the whole team for this has been on the, the front burner for about um, two months. So we're pretty excited to be getting this out the door this week. Um, some of the final bits of the UI actually landed uh, last night at about 6 Eastern. So we decided we wanted to give it one more day to bake. Um, but Matt, if you are up for this, um, I couldn't get my Java to work this morning. But if you can, uh, if you want to do a little bit of screen sharing, am I putting you on the spot with that? You, could I'm you screen sharing right now, in fact. Oh yeah, yeah. So screen share what's on line 193. Um, and as you can see here, this is the. Um, uh, you'll see some of the interface right. is is mostly familiar, but some of it's changed. So one of the things you'll notice is if you look at the media tab of Popcorn Maker, uh, you now have a media gallery. So this is essentially um, 
this is because I made a remix of um, Ron Burgundy in, in Anchorman. Uh, and so anyone who remixes this, would, that would show up in the media gallery, but we also have the opportunity to preload those as clips. Um, but what I wanted to show you today, Matt, if you click on the, um, click on the event once, and then, sorry, the event, I mean the video uh, event that's on layer one. If you click on that once, uh, yeah. you'll, you'll come up with the clip editor, which is a pretty jazzy, awesome new interface for adjusting uh, how these clips, uh, the in points and out points of these clips. So uh, right below the URL field, you'll see a little slider there. And so what you can do is you can drag that a bit to the left, and you'll see that that will adjust the in point of the, uh, of the clip that you're adding to your timeline. And you, oh, can turn cool. the, you can turn the video on and off. You can mute it. Um, Kudos to Kate for landing this last night. It's it's pretty awesome. Um, but we we do yeah. want to, yeah. Um, but we want a day to play with this. Essentially, we want to find some bugs. We already found a bunch. Um, we don't feel that there's showstopper enough to stop it from from leaving the train yard. But actually, last night was a bit more like this because we had to like stop the train a little bit uh, before it went out. Um, so yeah, if the, what the number one thing that you could do with us this week is, is to still uh, <clears throat> is to still test this. Just make something with this thing um, and, and report any bugs. It's actually helping a lot. We did get about five great community file bugs last week that really we wouldn't have caught. Um, so the system works. Please make with this. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I want to hand it over to. Oh, actually, there's some questions here. Um, do we have a co communications plan for Big Splash? So I think that there is a, a comms call after this one, and I'm going to join that and, and see if, if we can hatch something together. Is there an upcoming event conference milestone where we can show it off? Well, it just so happens it sounds like we're doing a remix party this summer, which I think is an appropriate spot for all this. Um, when are these new projects releasing? Well, that's an awesome segue. If um, Mr. Caggiano is on the call. Is he? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, Jacob. Hey. Um, yeah, well, this week we shipped some content for um, the Popcorn Maker as you know it um, and the Popcorn Maker of the Future. Actually, no, these are both for Popcorn Maker this week. Uh, the sequencer, once we have the sequencer, we'll have a bunch of other awesome new projects. Um, so on line 195, I've got. Um, if this was inspired by the folks on Reddit. Um, there was a person on Reddit who had a GIF open in one window and a YouTube song in another window, and he thought that they, the two sounded awesome in the experience, and so with popcorn you can bring them together. Um, and so uh, this one <clears throat> is a gentleman pushing a baby across the floor, um, and normally that's Pretty cool, but uh, with sounds, um, it's even cooler. And these take about five seconds to make. Um, so that's one is to make your own gift sound mashup. And then the other one, um, looks like you're still having fun with that one, though, too. I don't know if anyone can hear it. We cannot. I can try and mimic the sounds. Uh, Should we look at Banjo yeah. Frog? Sure, yeah. The Ride With Me Baby goes, Ride With Me Baby. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is a frog playing banjo uh, with water, which is phenomenal. Um, so, <laughs> so how did you make this, Jacob? Um, so uh, the source, uh, the is uh, from SoundCloud. I did a search for Creative Commons material on SoundCloud. Um, somehow my instinct told me that a banjo would sound good with the frog, so I searched for banjo Creative Commons license. And with the baby, uh, I just got very lucky. And I was just looking for techno, and someone said, ride with me, baby, and I just knew that someone was riding a baby somewhere on the Internet. Um, and so yeah, these are, these are really quick and fun and, and good for lots of moments uh, when you want to express yourself, um, say something to a friend or 
vent your frustrations on the comment board or your joy. So um, yeah, these are designed to be like very, very beginner, like first time I'm using popcorn type thing. Um, and then if you want to do something even more expressive or um, interesting to your audience, we have the next project, which is the top five list. So I invite you to go to the next one down. And so this one um, is kind of a, a, a blogging staple to make a top five, um, just generally a life staple. Um, and so with this one, uh, you can remix the project that I started with my five favorite Nintendo games growing up, um, and swap out the images, swap out the text, and uh, show us your top five of anything. And so there's, uh, it doesn't have to be video games. It could be comedians, actors. It could be top five places to go on a first date, and you can use maps. Um, it could be like top five hidden alleys in New York City, whatever, um, or like top five uh, worst haircuts of 2012, best haircuts of 2012. Um, so yeah, hit remix and um, swap out the pictures and the text, and uh, we want to see your top five. Very cool. Yeah, I wanted just to add to that, um, Matt. You'll probably notice that these ones are on the these projects that Jacob made are on the current uh, instance of popcorn that's in production. So we wanted to create uh, some projects for the week that would work with that instance because we weren't 100% certain about uh, if Sequencer would, would launch. So next week we'll probably introduce a series of projects that um, that makes sense with the new capabilities that the Sequencer gives us. And just somebody had a question on line 211, one of these new projects releasing. The ones that Jacob just discussed are live now uh, on webmaker.org slash projects. And we'll come back next week with some more. Awesome. A uh, few more questions under line 213. Brett, I don't know if you want to tackle those. So someone asked if there were plans for similar training releases on Thimble. Um, we've really trying to get this, this sequencer with sort of an all hands on deck environment for the last little bit, um, but we did ship a bunch of stuff about two releases ago, uh, and we have we will continue to do that. As I mentioned in there, one of the first things we want to work on is sort of harmonizing um, how the different tools publish. Um, without getting into the ton of detail. We just want to have them both shipped to the same place with similar metadata so that we can start to create a gallery that will show both of them. And as somebody mentioned, are we integrating these tools? Yeah, we're, we're, we're making plans of how these two tools will come together, but in the meantime we want to ship steady improvements to users uh, while we're doing that. Very cool. Thanks, Brett. And are the two main ways People can get involved listed there under line 220. You're looking for people to help with testing, further testing on media sequencing and filing bugs using the link on 223. Those are the main call to action. Yeah, so if there's remos, I mean, I, that sounded like that was a remo that asked that question on 216. Um, if you want to jump into the WebMaker channel, that, that's where we do all of our development and all of our planning and all of our work. So please introduce yourself to us there. The ticket that you have that we have um, on line 224 for filing bugs is where we'd like um, all the your user testing bugs that you could file on, on Popcorn Maker generally. But if you just go to the root of that uh, issue tracker, you'll see that there's there's no shortage of bugs <laughs> and uh, juicy issues. Um, obviously, it's an open source project, um, and we would love. Um, Lots of help there. Actually, I wanted to mention that. Thank you for bringing that up. That in this release, uh, with the the um, the UI that I mentioned that Kate had shipped, um, that required a whole bunch of improvements to Popcorn JS that were contributed by a community member uh, Brian Charles on a another um, media editor called Hapyak that uses Popcorn JS as well. So it was an interesting kind of community story of how those improvements. Uh, are really finding their way into into the work that we're doing on WebMaker, and so that's just to let 
any Remos or you know generally anyone, um, there's there's lots of vectors for con contribution that do find their way uh, in front of uh, a large audience. So uh, introduce yourself and um, look forward to working with you. Very cool. Thanks, Brett. Let's push ahead to line 227, Web Literacy Standard Update. Aaron, I think this is, uh, this is your item. Yep. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Um, thanks, everybody. So this is going to be you know, really boring compared to frogs and writing babies. But um, so we, we kicked off, so we've talked um, several weeks in a row about the Web Literacy, the web literacy Standard work, and that's, that's really about um, creating a learning standard around, um, around web literacy that um, we can align to with our content tools, but of all of our other kind of partners and people out there um, that care about this stuff and they're teaching this stuff can align to as well. So um, Doug has written a bunch of blog posts and, and give people updates. And so this is really an update um, after our first community call that we had on Thursday. So we, we've started um, meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern on Thursdays, and it's an open call um, to anyone in the community that wants to join us. And the idea is that it's a working call. So each week has a, a specific question or um, a piece of this that we want to tackle, and we spend the call really kind of working through it. And then after the call, we kind of publish the sort of decision um, as a request for comments with the idea that we have the week um, to really get those comments, and then we kind of build off of that decision in the next week. So um, this is very different than a lot of Mozilla calls. So this is kind of like a working theory that we have about how we can run these calls. Um, but so far, so good. We had our first call on Thursday, and the main uh, question was just base, baseline, like what is a learning standard? Um, and we had a great turnout. We had folks um, that were representing orgs that um, could align. So there was Code Scout, CyberWise, Mouse, um, were some of those folks there. There were some um, educators, mentors type of people, um, a few philosophers, <laughs> um, which were great, made for great conversation. Um, yeah, and so it was, it was a great mix, and we're, we're hoping to get even more people um, on these calls. But um, again, the conversation was, um, was pretty great. Doug did a great job kind of like keeping us at a working call level. Um, and really, like the decision, again, we talked about a bunch of, a, a bunch of stuff which you can see in um, the blog post online 231. But the, the real decision that we're kind of putting out there, again, as a request for comments, is that the MVP of the learning standard, which we are aiming to launch um, at the end of Q1, early Q2, um, will include the definitions of the skills and competencies that make up web literacy. So many of you have seen Doug's um, uh, grid with those kind of competencies you have there. So, so we've kind of come to consensus about, about what's in those, um, those grids, if you will. But then going kind of uh, at least a level deeper, which is really talking about it from kind of the verb perspective or the outcomes perspective. Like what do people have to do? Um, or what should people ha be, ha uh, be able to do um, uh, to sort of demonstrate each type of skill? Um, and with that kind of outcomes comes, you know, so there's some thinking around what are the sort of requirements um, essentially for assessment. And we don't want to prescribe any assessment, but again, um, in talking about what someone has to do, um, there will be kind of some, uh, some pieces laid out there that, that sort of help you understand if somebody has a skill or not. Um, what it will eventually include, this is not MVP, but it's something that my team is working on um, over the rest of this year is, is sort of sample assessments and associated badges. So again, the idea, I talked about this before, but the idea is um, you know, people could go learn anywhere and come back to Mozilla and take these sample assessments to demonstrate these skills and earn the Mozilla badges, or um, they could actually pull in those assessments and um, badges into their site, into their learning environment, um, and be actually issuing a Mozilla WebMaker badge from their site. Um, again, this is all. None of that will be required. There will be lots of people out there that just do their own thing and have their own badges that align with the standard, and that will be awesome. But we want to also have uh, make it as easy as possible for people to pick up this stuff as well. Um, what it won't include is that we are not um, we are not going to have requirements for the lower level skills. So we're going to really focus on those kind of top level skills. That um, again, the types of things you see in Doug's uh, grid. And if you actually look at the grid. And I'll put a link to it after this. Um, there's a parenthesis under each um, sort of top-level skill called competency. 
um, where it says, you know, for example, this, this, and this um, makeup. So, for, for example, um, actually, let me just type it in here so that people can see this. I think it's um, HTTP. Um, We've got to pull that now, uh, Aaron. I'll, I'll pop, pop it into chat so you don't have to. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to look at it so I can give an example. Yeah, so for example, browser basics is one of the sort. It says, you know, for example, URLs copy paste. Um, so what what we will not be doing is kind of hard coding, if you will, those lower level skills, those for example skills. Um, we will have you know some sort of set of lists of the things that we think um, go into these um, higher level skills, but. Uh, we want to make sure that there's room for flexibility. And again, if, if we focus on the higher level skill and, and build it around outcomes like browser basics, like person should be able to do X, Y, and Z with their browser, then whatever the incremental learning steps are that happen along the way um, really shouldn't matter as long as they can show that they know that stuff at the top level. Um, and that's really important too for, um, for just making this something that's easy for people to, um, to align to and to really kind of keep doing what they're doing but sort of under this, this bigger umbrella is, is to leave that, that room and that flexibility. Um, there won't be requirements for pedagogy or teaching approach. Um, obviously, um, Mozilla Webmaker has you know, a very specific approach around learning by making, and there will definitely be ties to Webmaker. We'll be pushing people out to Webmaker or leveraging some stuff there, but we, we certainly um, we, we want to really just define the skills and, again, what, what people need to do and, um, and leave room for lots of different pathways to the to those skills. Um, and then again, no prescribed assessments. We will have some sample assessments as examples and they will be fun and innovative, but um, you know, people can assess the stuff um, the way that they want. So that's really that. So that's that. And again, the what we're gonna we're gonna be presenting each week on this call um, with kind of our decision from the week before uh, and press and send it out to the webmaker list. So we really hope you guys um, kind of give us your feedback over the course of the week and kind of keep contributing to this stuff. Um, next week, it, we're meeting again, sorry, this week on Thursday, um, and we're going to be talking about kind of the next step up, which is um, on Doug's grill, grid, there are, there are columns. Um, I think they are exploring, creating, connecting, protecting. And so we're going to dive into that. Like, are those the right types of um, buckets? You know, is something missing? Is it the right framing? Um, so we encourage people to join us to talk about that. Cool, okay. Aaron, you got um, a question on line 256. Where does the peer assessment framework fit into all this? Um, so I don't know what framework exactly means, but so peer assessment is going to be a big piece of this. Um, so we really kind of feel like when you get to some of that um, kind of top level skill level um, that a lot of times it's, you know, it, it's made up of a bunch of kind of incremental skills. Um, it's often softer skills involved. Um, and it's going to require something more than some automated um, kind of embedded assessment type of thing like, like we build in Thimble. Um, and so um, most likely though there will be some way that, um, that people are essentially pledging for those kinds of top level skill badges say like I I know privacy and like here's something that I've done that shows that shows that and that's peer assess. Um, so we know the peer assessment will be a big piece of this um, and we most likely will have some kind of toolkit of both the peer assessment and then some of the kind of smaller um, those sort of lightweight sample assessments or activities I was talking about. Um, we've also kind of signed up to um, to be a prototyping um, peer assessment by the summer campaign. And so I think that's going to be a place where we're going to um, try to just see how, um, how we might make this work across kind of the mentor community and, um, and with the kind of existing um, literacy definition that we have. Cool. Thanks, Erin. Uh, let's push ahead. Line 269. Um, Erica, new standing communications update item in these calls. Do you want to take us through it? Star 7 to unmute. Eric, are you there? Star 7? Let's circle back to uh, Erica in a second. I think we have a special late-breaking message added to the agenda from from Jacob, Jacob, 
What what are we looking at? Hello. Uh, this is a special message. Uh, yesterday, I believe, hold on, not wrong, um, was Brett Gaylor's birthday. So that makes today his birth yesterday. Um, so I just want to suggest that we all wish him a happy birthday yesterday um, since he was working on his birthday. Um, so I made a video. Uh, <laughs> I'm risking life and limb to share this, as some of you may know. <laughs> Thanks for putting this together, Jacob, and happy birthday, Brett. That looks like a beautiful cake that uh, Jacob has lovingly prepared for you there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, usually I have shave and yak on top, but I didn't have time. <laughs> Let's circle back to Erica. Erica, were you able to unmute? Yes, I was. Apologies for that before. Um, oh, I was no wrangling with my soft phone app. Um, so uh, I, this is just a little note to say that we are going to start having a standing item that's weekly communications updates um, to talk about any announcements that we have, um, major press pushes coming up, launches, etc. cetera. Um, and this is also a time for anybody else to kind of contribute things, um, thoughts, pieces that they want to have uh, rolled into the communications um, kind of overall scheme, ideas about you know, using social media um, and other ways of using things better. Um, so yeah, that'll be standing in this call from now on. Um, and the main announcement that I have for this week is that we have two new public listservs. Um, one is comms at mozillafoundation.org, and the other one is memes at mozillafoundation.org. Um, comms is going to be the listserv that we use for everything, press announcements, um, press pushes, calls to action, um, help with things if we have a, a thing we want to spread across the Internet, um, th all of that will be communicated via that listserv. So please sign up and join. Uh, memes is uh, basically the best new thing that you found on the Internet uh, only in listserv form. So it's anything that you want to, any, any memes that you see blowing up that you think would be good to jump on, um, any awesome things that you see going on, uh, links that you see shared that you can't wait until this call to share, um, send it around that. Uh, listserv, and we'll also be pulling from there to figure out what we want to share over the WebMaker Twitter account, what we want to share um, and possibly make into a project, what would make a good popcorn project, all that fun stuff. Um, so yeah, you can click that link on line 273 um, to join the list. Um, can you guys hear me okay, by the way? I've heard a couple people say that it's quiet. Oh uh, yeah, you were a little faint at, at the start, but we can hear you just fine. Great, perfect. So yeah, click that link to join the listservs um, and send us cool stuff that you see on the Internet and be a part of our, com our conversation about communications. Very cool. Thanks so much, Erica. Um, well, that takes us to the end of the agenda. Some quick nonverbal updates under line 284. The Open Badges team are at South by Southwest at EDU. They'll report back next week. There's a cool micro project for the X-ray goggles from Mouse. Uh, online 290, and uh, an interesting badges implementation uh, with the Technology Strategy Board and Nesta in the UK, online 292. Uh, the agenda for next week's call, if you've got ideas, is on line 309. Um, and that takes us to the end of this week's call. Any final announcements, birthdays? Banjo playing frogs before we, or which may actually turn out to be lizards before we wrap up. Chameleons. Or chameleons, as the case may be. Sounds like no. Thanks for a great call, everybody. Talk to you all next week. Thanks, Matt. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.